It is 6.02 a.m. on this morning of July 23rd in 2020. Please gather your authorized version of scriptures and read along with me to make sure that I'm not lying to you and that I'm getting it right. Correct me, please, in the comments if I need correcting. If I say a word wrong or if I accidentally misplace a word with another now then as far as the doctrine and the truth of this word it is not up for discussion it is not up for debate i think um the god who holds everything together by him all things consist i think he's well more than capable of writing a book and looking after it so the um the doctrine it's not up for discussion. It's not up for debate. Now then, I'll begin this morning in Matthew chapter 10, verses 36 through 38. So, Matthew 21, chapter 12, chapter 10. verses 36 through 38 and a man's foes shall be they of his own household he that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me and he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. Read the rest of the chapter for yourselves. Then I will go to, we will go to 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verses 14 through 18. I flipped too far. Chapter 11, 8, 6. Once again, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 14 through 18. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. Wherefore? Come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Now then, this will be a short word study on the words, Abhor, abhorreth and abhorrest um, as they pertain to God's aberration of people. I guess you might kind of call it a follow-up to um, is there anyone that God hates? So here we go. Get your scriptures out if you haven't already and follow along. Be sure and read contexts on your own, in your own time. Now then, according to Webster's 1828 Dictionary, the word abhor is described as the verb transitive. The definitions are, number one, to hate extremely or with contempt. Look up contempt. To loathe, detest, or abominate. 
shack in brackets. Definition two, to despise or neglect. Psalm 22, verse 24. Well, let's go there. Psalm 22, because Psalms don't have chapters. Okay, Psalm, Proverbs. Psalm 51, 45, 33. Psalm 22, verse 24. For he hath not despised nor abhorred the affliction of the afflicted, neither hath he hid his face from him, but when he cried unto him, he heard. So he hath not despised or abhorred the affliction of the afflicted, neither hath he hid his face from him, but when he cried unto him, he heard. And this in the beginning in the description is written as a psalm, Psalm 22, to the chief musician upon Ijeleth Shehar, a psalm of David. And I've probably butchered those words, but oh, please correct me if needs be. Tell me how to do it right. Okay. Then also we have Amos chapter 6 verse 8. I'm a little rusty on the books in the Old Testament, so I'm going to have to go to the table of contents in this and see the A. Amos 1477. Keep me ever, ever near thy side, every day, every hour. Okay, Amos, chapter 6, so 1, 2, 3, 9, chapter 6. <coughs> Pardon me. Corona gonna get me. Ah! Okay, Amos, chapter 6, verse 8. The Lord God hath sworn by himself, saith the Lord, the God of hosts, I abhor the excellency of Jacob and hate his palaces. Therefore will I deliver up the city with all that is therein. Okay. Now then, definition number three is to cast off or reject. And it references Psalm 89, I almost said chapter, and verse 38. So let's go there. Proper Psalm 89, 89, verse 38. But thou hast cast off and abhorred, thou hast been wroth with thine anointed. Oh, there you go. Please read the context for yourself. In the law of first mention, the first time that um, the word abhor is mentioned is in Leviticus chapter 26, verse 11. So let's go there. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers. Okay, Numbers, Leviticus 26, verse 11. And I will set my tabernacle among you, and my soul shall not abhor you. Now then, I will be reading in Leviticus 26, Verses 1 through 36. And yes, I'm looking over here at my idiot notes. So, there you go. Um, okay. Chapter 26, beginning at verse 1. Ye shall make you no idols, nor graven image. 
Neither rear you up a standing image, neither shall ye set up any image of stone in your land to bow down unto it. For I am the Lord your God. For I am the Lord your God. Ye shall keep my Sabbaths and reverence my sanctuary. I am the Lord. If ye walk in my statutes and keep my commandments and do them, then I will give you rain in due season, and the land shall yield her increase, and the trees of the field shall yield their fruit. And your threshing shall reach unto the vintage, and the vintage shall reach unto the sowing time. And ye shall eat your bread to the full, and dwell in your land safely. And I will give peace in the land, and ye shall lie down, and none shall make you afraid. And I will rid evil beasts out of the land, neither shall the sword go through your land. And ye shall chase your enemies, and they shall fall before you by the sword. And five of you shall chase an hundred, and an hundred of you shall put ten thousand to flight, and your enemies shall fall before you by the sword. For I will have respect unto you, and make you fruitful, and multiply you, and establish my covenant with you. And ye shall eat old store, and bring forth the old because of the new. And I will set my tabernacle among you, and my soul shall not abhor you. And I will walk among you, and will be your God, and ye shall be my people. I am the Lord your God, which brought you forth out of the land of Egypt, that ye should not be their bondmen. And I have broken the bands of your yoke, and made you go upright. So then, idiot notes once again. Okay? So verses 1 and 2 are commandments from the Lord. Verses 3 through 13 are the blessings from God if these commandments are followed. Now then, I'll go ahead with this. Um, I have written here verses... 14 through 39 are the actions God will and did take against Israel for disobedience, the consequences of their actions. And if you have been saved for two seconds, converted, and truly saved for two seconds, you know that, yes, the Lord God forgives us. Yes, the Lord Jesus Christ washes away our sins by his blood with his blood thing being is though that we still live with consequences and for the sins that we commit after the day of conversion salvation there are consequences for sin then also okay so beginning in verse 14 I'll read through 39 but if ye will not hearken unto me, and not do all these commandments, and if ye shall despise my statutes, or if your soul abhor my judgments, so that ye will not do all my commandments, but that ye break my covenant, I also will do this unto you. I will even appoint over you terror, consumption, and the burning egg or ague that shall consume the eyes and cause sorrow of heart. And ye shall sow your seed in vain, for your enemies shall eat it. And I will set my face against you, and ye shall be slain before your enemies. They that hate you shall reign over you, and ye shall flee when none pursueth you. And if ye will not yet for all this hearken unto me, then I will punish you seven times more for your sins. 
and I will break the pride of your power, and I will make your heaven as iron, and your earth as brass, and your strength shall be spent in vain, for your land shall not yield her increase, neither shall the trees of the land yield their fruits. And if ye walk contrary unto me, and will not hearken unto me, I will bring seven times more plagues upon you according to your sins. I will also send wild beasts among you which shall rob you of your children and destroy your cattle and make you few in number and your highways shall be desolate. And if ye will not be reformed by me by these things, but will walk contrary unto me, then will I also walk contrary unto you, and will punish you yet seven times for your sins. And I will bring a sword upon you, that ye shall avenge the quarrel of my covenant. And when ye are gathered together within your cities, I will send the pestilence among you, and ye shall be delivered into the hand of the enemy. Do you see any similarities in the United States of America? Think about it. And when I have broken the staff of your bread, ten women shall bake your bread in one oven, and they shall deliver you your bread again by weight, and ye shall eat and not be satisfied. And if ye will not for all this hearken unto me, but walk contrary unto me, then I will walk contrary unto you also in fury. And I, even I, will chastise you seven times for your sins. And ye shall eat the flesh of your sons, and the flesh of your daughters shall ye eat. And I will destroy your high places, and cut down your images, and cast your carcasses upon the carcasses of your idols, and my soul shall abhor you. And I will make your cities waste, and bring your sanctuaries into desolation, and I will not smell the savor of your sweet odors. And I will bring the land into desolation, and your enemies which dwell therein shall be astonished at it. And I will scatter you among the heathen, and will draw out a sword after you, and your land shall be desolate, and your cities waste. Then shall the land enjoy her Sabbath as long as it lieth desolate, and ye be in your enemy's land. Even then shall the land rest and enjoy her Sabbaths. As long as it lieth desolate, it shall rest, because it did not rest in your Sabbaths when ye dwelt upon it. And upon them that are left alive of you, I will send a faintness into their hearts in the lands of their enemies, and the sound of a shaken leaf shall chase them, and they shall flee at the sound of a shaken leaf, as fleeing from a sword, and they shall fall when none pursue it. I'm going to go ahead and read through verse 46, which would be the completion of the chapter. And they shall fall one upon another, as it were before a sword, when none pursue it. Ye shall have no power to stand before your enemies. I'm at verse 38. And ye shall perish among the heathen, and the land of your enemies shall eat you up. And they that are left of you shall pine away in their iniquity in your enemies' lands. And also in the iniquities of their fathers shall they pine away with them. If they shall confess their iniquity and the iniquity of their fathers with their trespass which they trespassed against me, 
and that also they have walked contrary unto me, and that I also have walked contrary unto them, and have brought them into the land of their enemies, if then their uncircumcised hearts be humbled, and they then accept of the punishment of their iniquity, then will I remember my covenant with Jacob, and also my covenant with Isaac, and also my covenant with Abraham will I remember, and I will remember the land. The land also shall be left of them, and shall enjoy her Sabbaths, while she lieth desolate without them, and they shall accept of the punishment of their iniquity, because, even because they despised my judgments, and because their soul abhorred my statutes. And yet for all that, when they be in the land of their enemies, I will not cast them away, neither will I abhor them to destroy them utterly, and to break my covenant with them, for I am the Lord their God. But I will for their sakes Remember the covenant of their ancestors whom I brought forth out of the land of Egypt in the sight of the heathen, that I might be their God. I am the Lord. These are the statutes and judgments and laws which the Lord made between him and the children of Israel in Mount Sinai by the hand of Moses. So it sounds to me like a bit of repentance going on here or that he expects between um, verse 40 and 46. And another thought comes to mind if this is the way that God would deal with the Israelites, the children of Israel, in accordance with their sins and their iniquities, then what makes America or anyone else think that they are any better or that they will get off any easier? These were God's chosen people. He had made a covenant with their forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And for his name, he will not abandon that covenant. He is not a man that he should lie. Huh. Now then, the rest of this may be a little easier. Now then, we'll go to Psalm 5, I almost said chapter, and read verses 4 through 6. So, Psalm. One hundred nine, nine seventy-five, thirty-seven. Oh, Job, a little too far. Okay, twenty-eight, twenty-two. Psalm one, two, three, four, five. Verses four through six. For thou art not a God that hath pleasure in wickedness, neither shall evil dwell with thee. The foolish shall not stand in thy sight. Thou hatest all workers of iniquity. Thou shalt destroy them that speak leasing. And what is ne leasing? Simple definition here that I've written down in the sidelines. And it simply is falsehood, lies. I think I covered that in the previous video. Now then, verse 6 once again. Thou shalt destroy them that speak leasing. The Lord will abhor the bloody and deceitful man. Sounds to me like abhor, which is great hatred great, great hatred was directed at 
a person or people, namely what he say, the bloody and deceitful man. M A N man. That is a person. That is people. And if you can't see through the first one and then can't see through this second one, that there are people that God hates. And not only that he hates, but he abhors. Then your argument is with God. Your argument is with his word. And remember, he has placed his word above his name. So you go to him. You hash it out with him. I don't have time for it. This is truth. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Next. Under abhorred, I have Leviticus chapter 20, verse 23. So let's turn there. Okay, Leviticus chapter 20. Verse 23. Here yeah, there's chapter 20. This page goes to verse 22. There is verse 23. And ye shall not walk in the manner of the nation which I cast out before you, for they committed all these things, and therefore I abhorred them. Then. Okay. Let's do 22 through 24 in Leviticus chapter 20. Get a little bit of context going on. Ye shall therefore keep all my statutes and all my judgments and do them, that the land whither I bring you to dwell therein spew you not out. What is spew you out? If you don't know, look up the word spew. Or better yet, do a scriptural word search in the authorized version. And ye shall not walk in the manners of the nation which I cast out before you, for they committed all these things, and therefore I abhorred them. But I have said unto you, ye shall inherit their land, and I will give it unto you to possess it. A land that floweth with milk and honey, I am the Lord your God, which have separated you from other people. Come out from among them and be ye separate. Now then, in verse 22, or 23, pardon me. And ye shall not walk in the manners of the nation which I cast out before you. What is a nation? A nation is people. For they committed all these things, therefore I abhorred them. Not it, not their sin, not the things that they did, but them. Once again, abhor. Definition 1. To hate extremely or with contempt. To loathe, detest, or abominate. Okay. Now then, the next scripture reference is Deuteronomy. So Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Chapter 32. Whoa. 28, 29, 31, 32. Chapter 32, verse 19. And when the Lord saw it, he abhorred them. because of the provoking of his sons and of his daughters. 
Now then, let's go ahead and read verses 18 through 20. Of the rock that beget thee, thou art unmindful, and hast forgotten God that formed thee. And when the Lord saw it, he abhorred them. Them sounds like a people to me. And because of the provoking of his sons and of his daughters, and he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be. For they are a very froward generation, children in whom is no faith. Without faith it is impossible to please God. Now then, there we go again. He abhorred them. This is a simple noun. A noun is a person, place, or thing. Them refers to people. refers to people and the next reference for abhorred is in Psalm 78 verse 59 so Psalm 78 verse 59 When God heard this, he was wroth, and greatly abhorred Israel, people, a people, a nation, Israelites. Now then, we will read verses 58 through 60. Get just a hair of context. You go read the whole thing for more. For they provoked him to anger with their high places and moved him to jealousy with their graven images. When God heard this, he was wroth and greatly abhorred Israel so that he forsook the tabernacle of Shiloh, the tent which he placed among, the, among men. go on and delivered his strength into captivity and his glory into the enemy's hand verse 61 I just read now then the next reference is in Psalm 106 verse 40 specifically However, I have here in my idiot notes to read um, verse, verses 34 through 41. So let's go. They did not destroy the nations concerning whom the Lord commanded them, but were mingled among the heathen and learned their works. There's many heathen in America, many mingled in here. And how many people have learned their works? How many people practice their works daily and give it no thought at all? But yet say that they are Christian and they love the Lord and they know Jesus, they know God. Well, usually God there. A lot of times kind of slack to say the name Jesus of the Lord Jesus Christ. This false Catholic Jesus, girly looking blonde, in these fake paintings they have no problem with. And this fake Jesus that loves everybody and everything you do is okay and God understands. It's all right. We all sin. Um, they have no problem with him. But the Jesus that's coming back as a lion of the tribe of Judah, the Jesus who is God the Father, who has his expectations written in this book. That's a hair problematic. So, let's go. Starting at verse 36 on through 
41. And they served their idols, which were a snare unto them. Yea, they sacrificed their sons and their daughters unto devils. Devils like, oh, it was unplanned. It was an accident. I'm not ready for children yet. I can't live up to the responsibility of the fornication that I committed. Uh, my boyfriend didn't want children. Verse 38. And shed innocent blood. There are many, 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 many examples of innocent blood. But I ask you, what could be more innocent than a child, not a fetus, growing in the womb of a woman? where it should be the safest, the safest that it could ever be on this earth, being um, ripped out of the womb, having salt poured in there that burns it until it fights and struggles and rips itself to shreds, and then they suck out the remaining parts, or having its head pulled out of the canal, a needle stuck into the back of its skull, and its brain sucked out. What could be more innocent than that poor child screaming in the womb because of what? Some irresponsible, uncaring person has done. Whether it be the doctor, you know, witch doctor, or the mother, or both. I realize that there have been women that have been talked into um, thinking that this was the only way and they had no choice. That's why I say it as I do. However, with all the evidence that there is out there now of the showing the images of the child, not fetus, in the womb moving, taking nourishment, a heart beating there, there's little to no excuse. There's less excuse than there was when it was legalized in the 70s. Let's begin again at verse 38. And shed innocent blood, even the blood of their sons and of their daughters, whom they sacrificed unto the idols of Canaan, and the land was polluted with their blood. Thus they were defiled with their own works, and went a-whoring with their own inventions. Therefore was the wrath of the Lord kindled against his people insomuch that he abhorred his own inheritance and gave them into the hand of the heathen and they hated and they that hated them ruled over them. See any similarities? Once again, if this is how the Lord God Almighty Creator of heaven, of earth, and of all things created, if this is how he dealt with his chosen people, his chosen people, the children of Israel, then what makes anybody else think that they're going to get off any easier or any better? What makes them think? Yeah, that's a question, period. What makes them think? Okay, and Proverbs 22, Proverbs does have chapters. So Proverbs chapter 22, verse 14. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 14. The mouth of strange women is a deep pit. He that is abhorred of the Lord shall fall therein. That's pretty simple. The mouth of strange women is a deep pit. He that is abhorred of the Lord shall fall therein. Now I am understanding from previous teaching that the strange women or woman, or women, or a woman that was from a strange land, that was from outside of their boundaries, 
Um, I could be wrong, correct me where necessary. And I just have to include verse 15 as I saw it there, lying there, which, which reads, Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. Hmm. Now then, if foolishness abounds in the heart of the child, and the child behaves accordingly, in my opinion, it's the parents that need to be slapped upside the head for not taking responsibility and doing their duty as parents. Hmm. Just a little bit of feedback from this aged wanderer here. I find that that might sound a little better than the old man. Now then, under abhorrest, I have nothing. If you have a strong, exhaustive concordance, then you go under the word abhorrest and see what is there and look up the scriptures for yourself. I have one under abhorreth or abhorreth, and that is in Psalm 10. So let's go there. And I have written down verses 2 through 4. So Psalm 10, I almost said chapter again. Psalms do not have chapters. Okay, Job, Psalm 18, 15, 17, 6, 11. Okay. Now then, Psalm 10, verses 2 through 4. The wicked in his pride doth persecute the poor. Let them be taken in the devices that they have imagined. For the wicked boasteth of his heart's desire, and blesseth the covetous, whom the Lord abhorreth. The Lord abhorreth the covetous? Hmm. Can a watch covet? Can a car covet? Can a computer desk covet? Can this shirt I have on covet? If it could, it'd probably wish it were on someone else at times. Um, that oil lamp, that oil lamp sitting on the table behind me, can it covet? For the wicked boasteth of his heart's desire, and blesseth the covetous, whom the Lord abhorreth, whom the Lord abhorreth. The wicked, through the pride of his countenance, will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. I'm going to go on. Verse 5. His ways are always grievous, Thy judgments are far above out of his sight. As for all his enemies, he puffeth at them. What is that? That is pride. He hath said in his heart, I shall not be moved. I shall never be in adversity. 7. His mouth is full of cursing and deceit and fraud. Under his tongue is mischief and vanity. I shall not be moved, for I shall never be in adversity. America is the greatest country in the world. We'll never be defeated. We have the strongest military, and we have pride. We have pride. I'm proud to be an American. Hmm. Okay. The Lord hates pride. Pride goeth before destruction, and then haughty spirit before a fall. May as Proverbs sixteen eighteen. I have that written on an index card taped above me on this computer desk. Proverbs sixteen eighteen. Pride goeth before destruction. We're headed for destruction, and an haughty spirit before a fall. 
there's no haughtiness, no haughty spirit in the good old U.S. of A. Why, we are just humble, God-fearing people. Yeah. Anyway, that'd be the last reference that I have. And if it isn't clear to you, and you're not able to see that these are people in these verses, that yes, God does abhor people, as well as there are people that he hates, open your eyes. As I said before, if you can't see that, then your argument, your fuss, is with the creator of all things created, me. Dear Lord God in heaven, dear God, I thank you for this time. I thank you for these scriptures that you've given us. And holy Lord God, I do ask, I do ask that perhaps this will reach and get through to somebody he did to get through to. Um, may your word be blessed. Your word will not return void. You are not a man that you should lie. You meant what you said. You said what you meant. There is no doubt. There is no shadow turning with thee. Thank you for your precious word. This set authorized scriptures. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Amen.